Good morning. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me for uh, a demo of, um, I think it's a really cool necklace. And uh, it's our gemstone station necklace. And it was a design that we created for um, our most recent product launch, which was our spring roundup. And um, it uses some of our uh, three loop magnetic clasps, which are, um, we started doing magnetic clasps. I should send, I should give you guys a link for that. Um, we started doing magnetic clasps uh, a couple years ago and um, they were very popular. And um, as we were developing them, we, uh, well, there were a couple that came earlier on and they were kind of more traditional magnetic clasp designs. And then um, a while back, we started doing what we call our stitching components and started doing a kind of a slide style uh, magnetic clasp that had loops for stitching into beadwork. And we the first ones we did were a two loop version. Um, I'm going to just throw the link to that collection in as well. I just I could throw a million links in here for you guys today. Um, um, hello, Myrna. Hello, Lois. Hello, Kimberly. Nice to see you guys. Um, anyway, stitching. Stitching uh, magnetics. Oh, I should throw the blog post in too. I'm just full of good ideas today, you guys. <laughs> uh, let's see about stitchings. That's a good one. I'm just going to throw that in there. Um, what I'm putting in the comments, the links I'm putting in the comments is just resources. Um, you know, I talk about different products and, um, and I want to be able to I want you guys to be able to find them and learn more about them if you wish to do so. So anyway, just threw a couple of links in for the uh, collection in which we launched our stitch in products because they're a very cool group of products that work um, with seed beads. They're designed to work with seed bead designs, but they're versatile. You can use them with many different um, products. Hi, Gita. Nice to see you. And then I also threw in a link to the blog that tells you all about the stitch in products. Now, the design that, we're dem that I'm going to demo today um, doesn't use seed bees. Well, it does a little bit in the stringing, strung sections of the design, but it's not. Um, it's kind of using it in a different way, that, that stitch-in component, that stitch-in uh, magnetic clasp. So um, let me go ahead. Well, first, let me look and make sure there's nothing else I and no other links I should throw in for you. Um, I, there is something else I want to touch on before we go on to the demo. Um, someone commented in the post when I was um, promoting the uh, this demo event, someone commented, where do I get the beads? So as most of our, um, our fans, our customers, our wonderful jewelry designers that we, um, that we, that you're, you guys are why we do what we do, um, most of you know that we're a wholesale company. We're a wholesale manufacturer in Northern California. We um, create our product line right here and we're wholesale. So we sell to retail jewelry suppliers. Um, and I'm going to throw the link that we have on our website that kind of gives you a nice list of people who, of uh, bead retailers who sell TRCast product. Um, some more than others. So you kind of have to explore and see who's got what. But uh, many of them just carry a huge variety of, of TR cast components. Um, so, you know, if you're lucky enough to have a bead store nearby, we always say start there because we love our brick and mortar bead stores and there's fewer and fewer of them these days. So if you've got one, support it, um, look there first and you can all, always ask them for um a special order. If there's something of ours that they don't carry, you can, you know, ask them to uh to bring it in hello robin hold on a second robin i'm so glad you popped in did you know that in the spring fling great beat extravaganza event you won a kit and i sent you a message on facebook and i never heard from you so it's sitting here on my desk it's waiting for you um, to provide me a shipping address. So please go to your Facebook page and check your messages because in there 
should be a message from me asking for your shipping address. And I would love to send you your kit that you won. So that's only been sitting on my desk for a couple months, but there's no problem, really. So I'm glad you popped in and that I recognized your name. So, okay, where were we? Back to bead sources. So many of those, um, those uh, bead retailers that we list on our website that sell Tierra cast, of course, also also sell gemstones. And that's really what this um, product um, uses the most of is a lot of large hole and other gemstones. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera. And here's that amazing necklace. And um, I say it's amazing. I always sometimes after I say something like that, I'm like, I'm the designer. I sound too I don't know, like I'm boasting or something, but sometimes I make, sometimes I come up with stuff that I really like, and this was one of them. And um, so you can see here that it's not, you know, we, we design these to work with like seed bead panels and, um, and things that you can stitch to the loops. But in this case, I just use jump rings on either side and that's what I connected the cord to. Um, so I'm gonna talk about um, how I created this necklace. Initially, what I wanted was, it's a three-strand design. Um, it's all just strung on various cords and knotted. And what I was going for was, let me get back to where I can see the comments in case you guys have other questions or anything. Um, hello, Marika. And um, yeah, Kimberly, I love this necklace too. It was really a fun one to put together and kind of engineer. It was a... It was a, mm, it was a feat. <laughs> so really what I was going for was three strands. I wanted kind of graduated cord thicknesses. And that was kind of the tricky part. I needed beads. I needed beads to fit my cords. So this lower strand, I ended up using um, a 20 pound hemp cord for that. Um, Ideally, I would have had maybe um, some Eslon or Ceylon cords in, in all the right sizes, in all the right colors. And I didn't, I didn't have that in hand. So I ended up using a hemp cord for the lower strand. Um, and the two upper strands, when I was first designing, I really wanted it to be, um, I really wanted them to be three different sizes, but just because of what I ended up having on hand and in terms of color, I ended up using the same kind of cord for um, for this those two upper strands. And the one I used is a nylon um, point, what if they call it a 0.5 millimeter? I'm not sure. It's like a nylon macrame cord and knotting cord. It's like Eslon. Uh, that would also work in Eslon or Ceylon. Um, and that worked great because it's a quite fine cord. And so it was big enough for me to use in smaller hole beads like these little seed beads and these gemstone beads that just are have a normal hole. They're not a large hole bead. So this type of cord is what I used for the upper two strands. Um, this design is kind of too big for me to design all of it. I mean, um, recreate all of it in a single demo. So what I decided I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the lower strand off and I'm going to recreate that strand to just show you the knotting, the stringing and knotting um, process. If I can get it untangled here, I'm gonna remove that lower strand and I can get some of this other stuff out of the way. And of course the design, the inspiration page that you can download on the website um, has all the details of the, of the beads I used. Um, it identifies all the different stone types that I used and the, the cord and everything else. But here's the thing, you may not be able to find all these exact things. So you have to be flexible. You have to, you know, we always offer our, our design inspirations. I'm gonna zoom out cause I'm gonna be using a beading board. We always offer our design inspirations as just that, inspiration. And um, you will need to find um, materials that you can get your hands on to create your own variation. So you might not be able to find a large hole tiger's eye, 10 millimeter, 
disc bead. You might not be able to find these exact little gemstone, turquoise gemstone, African turquoise gemstone, or the same color of seed beads or whatever. But you know that another great quality about designs like this is it can really be a bead soup kind of thing. You can choose stuff that you have on hand and create, you know, a variation. I'm still, I'm talking about all the stuff I used and I'm also still trying to untangle <laughs> so I can get that lower strand detached from the clasp. All right, getting there. Um, and also, of course, you don't have to, this has a pretty Southwest feel, but you don't have to use um, one of our Longhorn charms. You can use anything. I pulled out some kind of more summery, let's get that light a little closer, some more summery kind of copper charms that um, I always think of our sunflower in the summer, of course, and our, our radiant sun, and then just some other ones, other charms that are very popular. So you can, you know, use what you want um, in whatever theme you want. So I'm just going to take, you can see that, I'll show you how to do this, but I knotted, I knotted, um, my little beads are slipping over the knots here, and that's that's a, something we'll touch on when I'm doing this. Um, they're knotted to the jump, jump rings, and I'm just going to open up the jump ring and detach it from the clasp, in theory. And I'll just leave that. I'll use fresh ones when we when we get to the attaching part of the process. So um, you know all of the all of the parts that I used for this original one are listed, of course, on the inspiration page. So you can um, look at that list and then kind of modify. You know, based on what you can get your hands on. And the other thing, the other tool that was really, really, really key for this design is um, a beading board because I really needed, I really needed the three strand. I needed to be able to figure out where I was going to place all of my, um, all of my gemstone stations and it's you know a station necklace by definition is one that has you know thing little groupings of components that are then um spaced out along a um, stringing material um so this the board was really crucial for figuring out placement of all of um all of the stuff and I was able to you know measure it um, carefully so that I could had enough space between the different strands it's pretty pretty um, they're handy to have anyway the, for this design it was just necessary really I mean I guess I could have pulled it off another way but this made it easier all right, so when I, when I created this design, um, I started at the bottom because I knew I wanted, um, I knew I wanted a bale and a charm. I disappeared those charms. What did I do with them? Here we go. I wanted a bale and a charm at the bottom. See if we can get this set up so you guys are going to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, I knew that I wanted the bale and the charm at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and attach. I'm going to choose one of these. And it looks like I pulled off out the radiant sun just without really consciously choosing. So I guess that's the one I'll use, huh? It's a favorite. And this one has been in the been in the Tierra Cast lineup for a long, 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 long time. Um, and then 
I can start, well, before I started stringing, of course, with um, when I was creating the design, I started with the bottom section and and I created that section with the spacers and the large hole beads. And then I put these our little these are fairly new, these little large hole flower beads. I put those on the um on the outside edge of the little gemstone and spacer arrangement. And then I started, you know, adding the other sections. And um, I didn't string anything, I don't think, the, before I kind of figured out everything I was going to do with the beads. So in the original one, I start with the, um, I start with the tiger's eye. And then the original one has these sweet little kind of large hole 10 millimeter rondelle picture jasper. And I didn't have any more of those on hand. So I'm using some, I think these are just some kind of agate. They're also the same shape as this one here. But the point is I want that lighter color. And these ones are very, there's a nice variation. Hi, Chris. Thank you for popping in. I think now that I'm thinking about this, I think another thing I did once I got to a place where where beads were getting strung and I was adjusting um, exact placement, I actually taped the strands down to the board a little bit so they wouldn't move around so much. And then I'd have to move the tape if I needed to adjust stuff, but still it was helpful. So then these are also same large hole spacers. And the little flowers on the outside. And then these are some little Howlite. Um, again, large hole 10 millimeter, sort of Hishi. I guess the, the official, the technical name for this shape of um, a bead is Hishi. Let's see, how many of those did I put? I think I put five, one, two, three, four, five in the originals. So you can see what kind of, just kind of, uh oh, what's happening? I think my camera phone disconnected for a second, but hopefully we're okay. Um, let me know. Someone pipe in and let me know if uh, everything is still streaming correctly. Sorry, I am here. I'm just pausing and troubleshooting a little bit to make sure that, um, I think my uh, my f camera phone is just trying to disconnect for some reason. Hopefully it will stop doing that. And obviously I'm not being exact in my counts right now. I'm just getting my beads and my spacers kind of in the general area where I'm going to want them to sit on the um, on the strand. I think in the original design I used the the tiger side I used was uh, were these pretty shiny ones but um, I happen to have some matte ones also and so I decided to use those for this second variation.
So, you know, you vow come back, come back, come back. Checking my cords, make sure I'm connected completely. Um, okay, and that is, um, I have laid out the same number of um, stations, I think. Let's double check. Yeah, the same number of stations as I had on the original necklace. So um, what I'm going to do now is start stringing them onto my hemp cord. And uh, I wonder if I put, I didn't really put, I didn't list like a specific length that you're going to start with with the hemp cord. So you're just going to cut yourself. Looks like about a yard just will work, but be generous. Um, don't cut yourself short, literally, because um, you're going to be nodding and you're going to need, you know, you're going to need that takes up space. And the nodding takes up space. So I'm going to string the first, the center section first, and then I'll start working my way out from there. And the pattern is a flower spacer, um, small spacer, and then a gemstone. Spacer, gemstone. Um, how many of those? Three. A sequence of three. And then the bale with the charm. So that's starting that, that center focal section. A little trick here, if you're working with a cord like this and it starts to get frayed at the end, you can put a little bit of glue on there, which I think I'm going to, you can also just trim it off as you go. If it starts getting frayed, you know, you can just give it a little trim, but a little bit of glue is helpful for um, kind of sealing it up and stopping it from fraying. And it also, and it also stiffens it a tiny bit. So then it just threads, makes it thread a little bit easier. And I usually use super glue just because it dries quick. And it just makes it easier to get the thread, the cord through the bead. All right, so I've got that main focal section is on my strand and I just lifted the whole thing so that, whoops, um, lifted the whole thing so that I could get it centered. And my next sentence was going to be, and then I want to make sure I didn't mess up my pattern. And look, I did, I missed a spacer. So I'm going to pull these off. And add another spacer. I'm going to put some glue on this side too. Or maybe I already did this side. I need to do the other side. Um, the first strand beads, let's see. Someone is asking, the first strand beads the same size? Um, they all are. The, all the, now in the original design, these rondelles here were different. They're uh, literally a rondelle shape. And these ones are the hishi shape. So um, that's what I mean about being conf being flexible with um, your materials. You'll want to find what you can find that will work for this. And they might be quite different. So it's really, you'll be choosing your beads based on how they look together, 
and obviously you want larger beads for the lower strand, smaller beads for the upper strands. All right, so let's see if I got my pattern correct this time. Looks good. And now I want, I've, I've pulled my cord so that's sitting right at the center. And now I'm just going to tie an overhand knot on one side of that little section of beads. And then I'm going to take the Come on, come back. I'm sorry about that little technical glitch today, guys. It's always something. Um, I'm going to tie this little knot. I want it nice and tight. And then I'm going to slide the beads over so they're right, in, right up against that knot and tie a knot on the other side. And this is where the tweezers, or if you have a knotting tool, this is where you'll want these. Because I'm going to grab... I've, in, I've started my knot, and I'm going to put my tweezers right through the hole, through the round of the knot, and grab the cord right next to that last bead. And I've got everything nice and snug next to each other. And then I'm going to pull my knot tight. And having those tweezers in there, grabbing the main cord, tightens it right where I want it to be. And then I can take the tweezers out and use it to kind of press that knot up against the side of the beads. And again, I want to make sure my knots are nice and tight. So that's my first section, uh, the center, the center focal section. So um, if you remember when I was talking about how I did all of this, um, you know, originally, I was laying out my all three strands of beads and then nudging and moving and deciding where they were going to sit in relation to each other. So there was a whole lot of, um, you know, making little adjustments during that part of the design process. Um, and it was, you know, I was kind of designing all three strands at once. Oops. Now, hmm, let's see if I can remember how I did this. Before I start stringing the next section, I need to tie another knot. But I don't want this one to be a tight knot. I'm going to put it about an inch from the first um, because I'm going to be um, but about an inch from the first, but I want to tie it a little bit loose. I'm not going to tighten that very tight because I'm going to string all of the sections and leave the knots fairly loose, and then I'm going to adjust the placement and tighten the knots when I get them all exactly where I want them. And it's a good thing we're not doing all three strands of this demo because we'd be here all day. All right, so now I'm just I'm threading on the next section of beads. And in the original design that we were talking about, the little picture ja Jasper rondelles, I only used four of those because I was going for, you know, I wanted a certain length. Wanted all the sections to be kind of a similar width. So that meant that these beads are a little wider, so I only used four. These beads are a little narrower, so I used five. So there was some adjustment um, based on how thick those beads are. And um, Janet is laughing and saying, what's wrong with that? But I, I, it's been too far in the past and I don't know what, the, <laughs> what she's referring to. So, but I'll just say probably nothing. Whatever she's saying, what's wrong with that? I'll, I'm just going to say probably nothing. All right. So I like that. Um, I like that length. Oh, well, here's a here's something, a point. 
something else that I was considering while I was doing this is, um, aha, I've figured out a foul up of my, the way I've got the beads laid out. So one of the things that happened with the second, the, the upper strand is all the same beads and just repeated the whole, the section. But this one is more alternated. I did a turquoise and then a jasper and then a like a pretty, it's almost like an e-bead, but it was a gemstone. Um, and I alternated. You can see that there's the jasper over here and there's the turquoise over here and then down here it's alternated. So I also did that with the, um, the lower strand, of course, because I wanted these colors to kind of alternate with each other. So there's the lighter, the jaspers were over here. So they would sit kind of in between the turquoise and the red here. And over here, I'm going to put the, the halite. It might be turquoise. I'm not sure. Um, put that here so that it, it alternates with the jasper here. I hope that all makes sense. So I'm glad I caught on to that before I started stringing. All right, so we've got these here. I've got all of them here, all of the ones I need in this section. I'm gonna go ahead and tie a knot here. And again, I don't want that tight. I am gonna get it fairly close to my section of beads, but I don't want it tight. And then I'm gonna tie another knot. And again, I'm just putting it about an inch away but I'm not gonna make it tight. Cause these are all gonna go through a lot of adjustment before we're done with this. And then, and a turquoise section. And of course, I wrote all, all of this is in the instructions, how I did all the strands. Um, when you create yours, you will just have to sort of replace the, the gemstones that, I'm t that I use with whatever you're using. It is going to take all day, Janet. This is a slow process. That's why I'm like, um, oh, I see. You're saying that that's uh, what she was commenting on. You're right. If you can set aside a day for this, go for it. It would be just a wonderful way to spend a day. You know, maybe it's raining. Maybe you're stuck at home and you're sick and you want a project. This could be perfect for that. And the last section on this side is another section of, um, whoops, I almost always forget that I need to tie that second knot before I start stringing the next station of beads. And then there, if these particular beads, these gemstone beads, they're cut so that there's a lot of variation in sizes. So you can just adapt, you know, you're going for kind of a certain length and you can just adapt it, um, the number of beads you need to do that based on how thick your beads are. Oops, extra spacer. I was uh, recently sick at home 
for a week with COVID. That was fun. Um, and I thought that I might like do beading projects or crafting, but I didn't do much. But I imagine if if you if someone was homesick and they felt well enough, this would be a great way to, you know, keep the boredom away. And, you know, be productive. Some people hate to not be productive. I don't think I mentioned the tools you need for this um, while we were early in the in our discussion. Um, you need scissors, of course. You need some good sharp nose tweezers. And then at some point you're going to be working with the jump rings. So you need chain nose, uh, two pair of, you know, pliers, chain nose and bent nose works well. Chain nose and chain nose is fine. Um, so pretty minimal tools. You don't need that much. Okay. This is a tricky um, setup for my workstation because I'm at a point now where, you know, I have my, my cameras right here. And um, I can't see the upper section of the board because it's in the way, but we'll be all right. So I'm going to go ahead, before I start fussing with placement on that side, I'm just going to go ahead and string the other side. Kimberly says she's a doer. She's always creating, making, fixing, cleaning, organizing. She doesn't sit well, is what she's saying. <laughs> Some people don't. I have to say I've gotten better at it the older I get. Speaking of getting old, it's my birthday today. <laughs> I have gotten better um, at sitting and resting when I think I need to, or even if... Even if I don't think I need to, I've become a little more comfortable with it. You know, I get plenty plenty of stuff done when I need to get it done. Gotten a little better at chilling out. I think that might be a good thing. Oh, and and Carrie says she, or Kimberly says she's she's learning to rest. It doesn't, you know, depending on your, maybe the way you were brought up or just your, your, your own energy, it doesn't necessarily come easy to people. Some people, it comes way too easy to, but for some of us, not so much. Thank you, Lisa and Robin. see I got my second knot these particular little um, large hole spacers so I'm using are our five millimeter nuggets. And they're just, boy, I use these beads a lot. They just come in handy. They're kind of perfect so often for whatever I'm working on. Really a nice, neutral, functional little spacer bead. Hello, Maureen from British Columbia. So she's also, uh, she doesn't sit well. She has to be crafting when she sits. Okay. And another knot.
I think the length of cord, I probably mentioned this in the um, instructions. Whoops, let's tie that second knot that I keep forgetting. I probably mentioned how long to cut your cords. If I was smart, I did that. I did. I mentioned, I mentioned um, cord lengths. And I think I was right with this lower strand. Um, I cut originally about 36 inches. So I didn't measure this time, but I eyeballed it. And it seems like it's just about right. Noah says she worked as a nurse for 15 years and was always moving all the time. And now she finds it very restful to sit and bead. I lost my spacer. Okay, how am I doing? So that is all the stations Whoops, for that lower strand. And as I was, I was talking about how long to cut your cords, and as I'm looking at the instructions, um, I wrote them so that you start with the top strand. So that's funny that when I started doing this, my instinct was to start with the bottom strand. I guess it doesn't really matter because you're not, I mean, you're going to start with whatever inspires you, um, and you're going to start just making placements of you know arranging the beads and the colors and the shapes um however it looks good to you so you can see now the top strand had all of my little sections about an inch apart um the second strand is a little longer i wanted um you know the, the sections up here near the clasp i wanted um them to go you know not not right up to the clasp but a little bit getting close to the clasp I had to spread those sections on the second strand out a little bit more trying to get this so it's lined up evenly okay um, so the sex, the bead sections on the second strand were spaced out a little bit more than the upper strand. And then the lower strand, the sections are a little bit wider, but still I wanted them spaced so that they would kind of sit in between the strands on the, um, on the middle strand. So you can see right here, this is why we leave the knots looser because I'm going to adjust the placement. So I'm just going to loosen the knot up a little bit and I'm going to slide the beads down and then, then I can tighten the knot while hopefully making sure that my beads stay where I want them. And I want that not tight. Now that we're maybe not super tight because there may still be some um, some adjustment, but tighter. And then you can see that I've moved it down a little bit, about a quarter of an inch. And now I need to move this knot down. So I'm going to just loosen it. And I'm going to squeeze all those beads together. And I'm going to grab, I tuck my... Um, my tweezers down through the the loop of the knot and grab that cord right next to that last bead and then when i pull this it will 
it will bring the knot down next to the bead and then I can I can tighten it and then I'm going to do the same I'm going to work my way up on both sides and so I'm going to do the same on this side and now I have a clue I know that this is about a little over an inch apart so um, this one actually the one over here looks actually pretty good so I'm going to go ahead and tighten <coughs> Tighten the first knot, and then don't have to do much adjustment at all. And loosen this one and do the final, almost final tightening. And I want to make sure that they're, the knots are really nice and tight up next to their beads because... Um, I don't want the knots moving and cre and then leaving space between the section of beads and the um and the uh end uh, and the knot. Um, another thing, I think I don't think I really said it out loud, but um, whatever cord you're using and whatever beads you're using, of course the beads have to be able to thread onto the cord. But it also has to be, um, the cord has to make a knot big enough to hold your beads in place. And if a single knot won't do it, then you can always add a second knot kind of right on top of it. But that needs to be a, uh, a factor when you're choosing your cord. And these, I think I'm happy with the placement of these two lower sections. So I'm really going to tighten those knots down now. And depending on the cord you choose, most of the nylon cords, you don't have to do this, but it might not have been a terrible idea with the um, hemp. You might want to pre-stretch it a little bit. All right, so we got these two sections placed. Now, this one, I want kind of where this gap is in the middle section. I want that section of beads right about there. So I need to move these a little bit closer. And again, the distance between sections is now should stay pretty consistent through the rest of the, um, the strand. So move this down a little bit. So it's a little bit of a fussy process. I'm sure you're noticing that. But sometimes, you know, a design takes fussing. Hello, Julie. Thank you for the happy birthday messages, Kimberly and Landa. Okay, so that's good. Make sure that's tight. Um, there are some beadalon makes a nice uh, knotting tool. It's like a little tool that does this work of the um, how I'm using the tweezers. But I've never played with it and gotten um, good with it. So um, I always just I always think, oh, I should learn how to use that tool. Um, and then I end up just using my tweezers. So I've got knots tightened and I'm not completely happy. I want this to be still down a little bit more. So let me adjust that a little more. That's better. Um, Maureen, I don't have anything special planned for my day. Just <laughs> there will probably be some dinner tonight with um, with my husband and my. Hopefully, at least I have two kids. My son lives um, down in the Bay Area. Um, my daughter lives up here near closer to me. So hopefully, at least I'll get to maybe they can join us for dinner. But everybody's been so busy. We just have not made plans to do anything on my birthday but something we do do every summer it's kind of a birthday observation my husband's birthday is also in july 
is there's a local circus that comes through every summer and we always go to the circus. And so we're doing that in a couple of weekends and that's sort of the official birthday observation. So that's something to look forward to. But today we've all been just so busy that we just haven't made any big plans and that's okay. I'm all right with that. And you know, when it, I'm not, it's the funny thing to say since I'm um, a content marketer and I'm, I work with social media all day long, but in my personal life, you know, I'm often like, ah, social media. Um, but then on the other hand, it can be, it's really, really wonderful for some things, including um, birthdays. Cause you know, I'll get, you know, I'll get a whole bunch of messages when I actually check my social media today, there will be a whole lot of messages and that, you know, that feels nice. I do like that about social media. Because it'll just make me feel loved all day long. All right, getting this one in its spot. We're getting there, guys. This is a slow little, it's a fussy little slow process. And it will, like we were talking about earlier, you know, this might be an all day or even a multiple day project. You can just lay it out and come work on it for a little bit and then come back and work on it some more later. I'm bringing this knot down a little bit more. So this little section of, um, of uh, the turquoise beads can be better placed. I did tighten this one pretty good prematurely, but I should still be able to get it and hide. It's getting there, don't you think? This, I couldn't not demo this because, um, um, hi, Leslie Pope. Oh, Lydia says she's never been to a circus, but went to the Barn and Bailey Museum in Florida. That must have been fun because, you know, those older circuses, the Barn and ba Bailey circuses, I think there's a great um, documentary I watched on Netflix um, once that was just fascinating because those circuses have been around like Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey. And there were a few others. They've been around, you know, since the 1800s or even further. Um, and just the sto their stories are so fascinating. Um, this little circus that um, we like to go to is based here in Northern California. And they're just, they're very, uh, it's always a story there's a theme and a story that they're telling with each year's production and they're just very um very artistic and it's really a wonderful little circus and so we just as soon as we see that they're selling they're setting the schedule and selling tickets for this year's show we uh we get online and grab them i actually had to reschedule it this year because i um you know, I was sick with COVID and I, I started getting sick that very day when we were supposed to go to the circus and they were wonderful. I called them and I said, I'm sick. What can I do? And she said, she said, just buy tickets for another day and then we'll refund you for these ones. And I said, awesome. So I was able to just, and this was only with a few hours notice. They were so wonderful. She just said, yep, just buy, go and check the schedule and buy um, tickets for another location when it works for you 
and um, we'll just refund you for the other ones. And I was like, that's awesome. And I had given my kids, I said, you know, I'm sick. I can't go. You guys could go without me. And they're like, no, no, it wouldn't be the same. We'll wait. So it worked out really well. Um, yeah, circuses are fun. This is a great little circus. I think that if you can find a local one, it's always just a fun fun thing to do that's so entertaining for about two hours and even the local the small local circuses they can be just amazing doesn't have to be one of the big fancy barnum and bailey type of circuses all right i am almost here guys I'm fussing with these last two. I just want them in the perfect place. You do not have to be as fussy as me. Um, I think I started to say before I went off on a circus tangent, um, that when we, when we did this product launch, it was a very small product launch. So it was, um, just a few designs. I only did five designs for that launch. And this one was the immediate, um, hit. And, um, the one people asked for a demo for right away. And I was like, oh, that's, that's going to be the hardest one to demo. <laughs> so <laughs> I put it off. Um, I put it off and this is the last demo for that particular group of designs. I will not be doing a live demo next week because I have a photo shoot scheduled for, um, and as you guys are the first to hear it, for the next um, product launch, which will be in September. So I have a photo shoot scheduled for that next week. So that's just going to take all my attention. So there won't be a, a demo next week. And we'll see. We'll see how the week after that goes because I might be wiped. All right. This is all of the strands. As I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh, boy, there's some placement issues I could have fixed, um, you know, before I finalized this design. But you know what? It looks pretty good. Anyway, I'm noticing that this, this section of beads is a lot higher than this one. So in a perfect world, I might adjust that, but I'm not just going to be concerned about it right now. What I want to do now is just show you guys how I connected the strands to the, um, to the clasp. So, um, I wanted this necklace to end up about, it ends up about 25 inches. So I actually used the markings here um, on the board so that, and I just lined up the, the tops of the clasp components. And that what's something important with our magnetic clasps is you want to make sure that you attach them facing opposite ways so that when you're closing the necklace, they'll, you know, they'll, the magnets will meet. So um, important thing to remember when you're attaching these magnetic clasps. Um, and again, I just used, I used our large round jump rings. And let me see if I can remember how, maybe I wrote good instructions. What did I say about attaching these? I might have had very good tips. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, close this, um, close this, well, no, maybe, okay, how about if I read my instructions? What did I tell myself to do? Okay. 
I actually told myself the instructions I wrote were to attach the jump ring to the clasp first, and then I attached the, the cord and knot it to it. So I'll follow my own instructions, attach that jump ring, and make sure that the hole, uh, the, that the jump ring is closed nice and cleanly, especially for those upper strands that have a, the finer cord. Something that has taken uh, some adjusting with using our magnetic clasps is, of course, your tools stick to them. So <laughs> when we first came out with magnetic clasps and um, started having to work with them, that was a challenge. I was always attaching my tools to the, to the magnetics. All right, so here's where, remember I mentioned early on about taping the um, the necklace to the uh, board. I think that that's right about here is when I did that because I didn't want the strands moving all over the place um, as I was trying to tie these. So let me get some tape. I don't think I said anything about that in the instructions, but I just think it might help to keep everything where they need to be. So I'm just going to take a piece of scotch tape, maybe right there, just kind of see if it helps to keep things in place while I'm trying to do this knotting. And then, so the way I did these knots is um, there's a final spacer bead. Hmm, how did I do that? I threaded this through, threaded a spacer bead on, threaded to do the through the cord, and then bring it back and thread that end through the spacer bead again. And then I pulled it all up until it was the length it needed to be. And that's part of where the keeping the everything secured to the board came in kind of helpful because it helped. I can see that this one's going to hang down a little lower, but that's okay. I wanted to be sure that um, everything's going to kind of... I don't want to accidentally end up with too much distance or not enough distance between the strands. Okay, so I've got this here. I've got my spacer and a loop. And then I guess I just tied a knot. And again, I'm going to grab those tweezers and grab the cord so that I can bring that knot right up to where it needs to be next to the up here close. Come back. and then get that tightened. And this knot in particular um, needs a little bit of glue because I don't want things moving around. And in a perfect world, I would let that dry and then trim. But in the demo world, I'm just gonna trim it now.
And I did in the original, and it looks like things have moved around a little bit, but in the original, I did try to make sure that these were all kind of, my knots were very even up here. I'm not doing the greatest job of that for this, but I did want those knots to be all kind of nice and even, level. Shelly says she can't see what I'm doing. Yeah, that's hard because <laughs> the hands have to be in the way sometimes. I'm just threading this cord through the jump ring. I, I, had, I threaded on a large hole spacer, threaded the cord through the jump ring, and then back down through the spacer. And then I kind of adjust it so that I have uh, the distance where I want it. And then tie an overhand knot and use the tweezers again to bring that knot right up where I want it. And the tweezers also will stick to the magnet, just so you know. And very tight, and again with a little bit of glue there. So the I used these same spacers with the um, with the two finer strand cords, and that was a little tricky getting my knots. I had to double up on the knots to um, to make them big enough to hold that spacer. Um, you could use a different spacer that it had a smaller hole to kind of help reduce that. Um, cause I do find that those knots could have been a little bit bigger to hold those, um, beads up there. Every once in a while I pick up this necklace and one of those spacers has slipped over the knot. And I can take off my tape. That just kind of kept everything from like flying all over the place while I was trying to work with it, you know? Let's see if we can get it laid out nice and tidy so we can see how we did. And there we go. Oh, hello, Marlene. We're sorry you're late too, but you can always rewatch it. It will live on our Facebook channel and our YouTube channel for as long as those exist. So there we go, guys. And it's a little bit, I usually try to keep to an hour. This is, we went a little bit over, but this is a slow and meditative design, right? Um, yeah. I'm happy that, that we were able to do that, show you guys how to do it and um, change up the charm theme so that now this is not, it still feels a little bit Southwest. And part of that is to do with the palette, you know, copper and turquoise always feels a little Southwest, but um, changing out the design, uh, the charm so that it's not that kind of Western Longhorn thing. It's kind of nice, you know, just to show that there are other possibilities it's a great design and could you could use completely different palettes um, and different charms. And just one of the things I was imagining, I didn't get out beads for that, but I was imagining a silver version with um, all shades of blue um, with a sea themed, like a seashell charm. So I think that that would be um, a gorgeous variation. So as always, um, I did include in the downloadable instruction sort of my original design kind of laid out on that board. So that was smart of me. I think that that will be helpful when you guys are, you know, if anyone decides to make a variation of this. Um, yeah, there's a lot of possibility here. 
it could go, you know, a nice sea theme. Uh, anything else you can think of. Um, Robin's saying she's got some gemstone beads that she can use. And, uh, oh, Kristen says she accidentally hit the angry face. I hate it when I do that. And I do it all the time because it's right next to other useful faces. And uh, I think you can go and change that if you if you really are bothered by it, Kristen. But, but don't worry, I won't take it personally. All right, I'm going to switch my camera. Um, all right, that was fun, you guys. It was slow. Sorry about that. It's just this design. It's a little bit slow and thoughtful. So um, hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, and um, I always appreciate when you guys are just, you guys are always so appreciative. And that um, that feels good. So thank you. Maureen, um, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope everything goes very, very well. And I hope we see you again um, at the next demo. Um, all right, Robin, I'll get your kit in the mail to you if you send me a message and give me your address. And um, everybody be well, make wonderful things, and, um, and I will see you next time. Bye.